So you will be taught as always that your love for God will be the ultimate. You cannot afford to tie your work with God to money and car and prosperity and marriage and child and whatsoever. No, 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 no. It will make your Christian experience fake. Are we together now? However, it is God's desire for you to have a consolation in your Christian experience. Say amen. amen. I've taught us again and again that materialism is not having materials. There are poor people who are materialistic. Absolutely. Materialism has nothing to do with materials. Materialism is the influence of the flesh. The influence of things around when they occupy the place of god don't be mistaken that when you see somebody come out of a jeep or somebody wears a designer clothes that person is materialistic far from it in fact let me tell you sincerely most wealthy people conquered money to be wealthy in the first place are we together now so god wants your success and my success say amen, amen. but Paul began to give us one key to the success principles of the spirit. And he says, finally, brethren, let me talk about your thought life. Paul, in many scriptures and the psalmist and Jesus himself, begins to tell us that in our quest to become all that God has destined for us, we must pay attention to our minds. We must pay attention to our thought life our convictions and the things that we think about have a lot to do with the manifestation of our reality. And again and again, the word keeps challenging us to order our thoughts aright. Are we together now? So the Bible begins to tell us that if you want to succeed in life, your thoughts must be cultured. They must be governed. I've taught us again and again that your life revolves around your most dominant thought. This is very, very true. That your life becomes eventually a reflection of your convictions. Right? And, and so in, in Psalm 19, let's look at Psalm 19 verse 14. The psalmist puts it in a very interesting way. Two keys that are responsible for our success in life. Two keys that are responsible. Psalm 19 verse 14. I, I believe, yes, it should be. Psalm 19 verse 14. Let's turn there. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 19 verse 14. Let's read it together. One to read. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The psalmist tells us to be successful. There are two things that are very important. Number one is the meditations, the contemplation, the content of your heart. And heart there is interchanged in many places in scripture with mind. Are we together now? The meditations of your heart that lead to the words of your mouth can decide your destiny. This is very, very important. Hallelujah. Now, um, many people have not been taught that their mentality, their mindset, their ideologies are largely responsible for the quality of their life. There are people who pray all the time and, and, and now there is a place for, you know, taking charge of spiritual forces that attempt to cause people to fail and so on and so forth. But we must realize that not everything about a man's failure is tied to devils and witches and wizards and so on and so forth. There are many of us who do not have the kind of mental state that will afford the Holy Spirit birth in us the things that will create a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. And so Paul is teaching us that whatsoever things he's giving us spiritual parameters that govern our thought life because i tell you this sincerely there is no man that wins the olympic by mistake there's no such thing as success by mistake it doesn't happen hallelujah so it must be intentional and we must upgrade our mindset you can um make make reference to our teaching on pulling down strongholds right that message will bless you 
because a man is entirely a summation of his mindset and ideology and i told us how that our ideologies are principally formed from our cultures is that true our cultural background we come from different areas with different ideologies about god about success about marriage about life about victory about failure etc when we come to god we don't come so that he will add to those faulty mindsets we open up our spirits and we ask him to edit that anything that is not consistent with the pattern of the christ must leave even if it is culturally correct is god speaking to us now so many of us are victims of culture we have held on to age-long stumbling blocks that will never afford us the opportunity to taste of kingdom success we hold on to these things we cherish them so much and the devil keeps taking advantage of them and destroying our lives but we must choose to lay them down in the name of jesus christ i told us also that our mindsets are formed as a result of our levels of exposure the reality you do not know exists you cannot open up your heart to take it is that true and so the word of god exposes us to the possibilities that exist so that by faith we can open up ourselves and tap into those possibilities our mindsets are also framed from our past and for many of us our past are not good experiences but we have allowed it to become part of the walls in our minds that make us feel we are failures there are many of us seated here who believe that we really cannot do much and so that limitation that has come from our repeated failures of the past creates stumbling blocks and stop us from becoming all that god has destined take seriously what i'm sharing with you because your life is at the mercy of these truths hallelujah are we together let the words of my mouth let the contemplations and the meditations of my heart be such that it is acceptable unto you let it be such that is consistent with your ways if you must live in the kingdom you must subscribe to god's way of doing things see the word of god is not an opinion a believer is not just one who believes the word of god a believer is one who submits to the word of god you submit to it ultimately regardless of what you feel about it are we together now if i can change your mindset then you can prosper i guarantee you i don't care what the limitation is right now but if you refuse to allow your mindset to be changed then there is nothing that can be done to you a man's limitation is primarily his mindset everyone see after me in the name of jesus i receive grace from god for a change of mindset a change of ideology hallelujah this was the limitation of abraham for a long time god wanted to do great things through his life but his limitation became a stumbling block and one time god called him out and said abraham i want to expand your mind attempt to count the stars and he kept trying and failing and you know he gave up and god said this is how your seed will be finally abraham believed god and the bible says it was counted unto him for righteousness hallelujah it's very very important for us to understand um your thought life listen your thought life is a mechanism for creating things in your physical environment your mind is like a machine it's a spiritual component that is locked up in you that is responsible for creation i need you to understand this this is the principle of creation many people have been taught that creation is just about speaking no it's not about speaking alone there are two components that must coexist for creation to happen listen every time you speak what is not consistent with your mind every time you speak what is not consistent with that which is locked up in your spirit you just wasted your time believe me even for salvation the bible says with the heart man believes and on the strength of that conviction with the mouth confession is made and it will lead to salvation are we together now so in that same way the first key to succeeding 
is your conviction within that internal work that coming to a point where your thought life is completely governed by the word of god we call that state having the mind of christ the mind of christ is not just a mind that is spiritual the mind of christ is the mind that has been adjusted to think entirely from god's perspective so your viewpoint is consistent with the word of god hallelujah we have not been taught the consequences of thinking evil we have not been taught the consequences of having a faulty mindset listen your mind and your thought life will eventually create what you are thinking believe me on this when i tell you believe me eventually and so satan destroys our lives not just by bringing physical tragedies but because for many of us our minds have not been fortified by the word of god we have not embraced the spirit of god enough to produce that kind of alignment and adjustment we allow all kinds of thoughts that's why the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not what carnal in other words this battle is not in the flesh realm it says but they are mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds then it says casting down every imagination comes from the word yetzah creative thoughts that are planted by satan because if it is in your mind and it becomes an obsession it must manifest it is not if it is when listen whatever stays in your mind long enough i guarantee you no power in existence will stop it from manifesting Genesis 11. Genesis 11. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. I believe in you. Let's read. This was a strange man called Nimrod Kush. Hallelujah. That the Bible says they, are, they were attempting to build a city. Look at, please, whether it is spiritual or physical is audacious. Let's just, let's, let's take it from there. Are we, uh, there are all kinds of schools of thought, whether it was physical or spiritual. That's not really the most important thing. The fact that it was a conception in the heart of man to build a tower. Listen to how men think. Goto, come, let us build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens and let us by it make a name for ourselves according to them they did not see any impossibility not impossibility of raw materials not impossibility of workforce not impossibility of anything let's see what happened verse 4 verse 4 and they said come let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth are you ready now watch this this was nimrod proposing the idea are we together he was proposing the idea because he knew that if the people begin to think if they can get to a point where that mental picture is in them the same way is in him nothing will stop them verse 5 it says and the lord came down to see the tower which the children of men did what look at it not the tower that they are building in god's mind they have finished it look at this is that in your bible <laughs> nimrod says look guys come together let us build a city we want something to manifest physically but we know that this is everything is truly possible so i want to do something to your mindset do you guys believe we are able and they said yes and god was watching the moment they agreed god said the house was finished he came down to see what they had built can you imagine that that a man had come to a point of persuasion where his thought life has agreed with the word of god right and then the bible tells us that it will be manifested listen listen do you know that god had to scatter them for that plan to fail god did not sit in heaven and say look 
Don't worry, these guys are just silly people. He literally had to bring confusion to their languages so that they no longer would reason with one another. Every business empire you see today, every successful ministry, every impactful believer who has been mightily used by God. Listen, when God comes to you, when he calls you, the second assignment is not to use you. When he calls you, listen, he equips you. And part of that equipment is he has to make you get to a point where your mind resonates with his own. And then he can send you anywhere. When he called Moses, he said, Moses, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. And Moses said, huh, I, I know Ramesses. Who do I tell them has sent me? And he said, you are calling for a revelation. I am that I am. I want to show you a bit of the possibilities that are in me. And when he showed Moses, he said, on the strength of this mental picture, go. Your life is at the mercy of your thought. First and foremost, your mind your thought life. This is the spiritual gateway for birthing ideas. This is the spiritual gateway for birthing creativity. This is the spiritual gateway for manifestation. This happens with the anointing and every other thing. Listen, if you ever will raise a dead, you must have conviction enough to stand before one. Are we together now? When a man walks to a sick body and looks at the sick body, you are seeing that this guy has cancer. Are we together? They are showing you a medical report. Terminal case of cancer. Yet you have the gods to overlook that report because there is a higher reality. Your mind has been programmed to see something higher and better. Are we together now? You pray for someone on a wheelchair. Your physical eyes is seeing limbs that are not... I mean, these limbs, even if he's well, he can't stand because he's just skin bones. And you have the audacity to hold his hands and say, stand up. Listen. Sit down, sir. Thank you. Your life is a reflection of the excellency of your mindset. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. The Bible never said all things are possible for everybody. It says to him that believes. Your first assignment is not to look for money to prosper. Believe me. Your first assignment is not to look for a job or a business idea. Please believe me on this. Your first assignment is not to run around looking for helpers. Your first assignment is to stay and rise to a point where your mindset, where you are obsessed with the possibilities, where the word of God literally is like your mirror. The same way when you look at a mirror, you see yourself. Are we together now? The Bible says as we behold him, we are changed. There is a transition. There is a transition. The workers, listen, none of you signed any form that you will come for koinonia this evening. Did you sign any form? But the workers came as early as maybe six seven eight and they started dressing everything the worship team was preparing you know why because something has happened to them there is an understanding they know that god will draw his people to himself and bless them imagine if they sat down and say let's watch if we see people come are we together now i mean who told the people that there will be an overflow outside don't say it's because it has been happening there was a first day Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. The oil was at the mercy of the vessel. The oil was not small. The vessel was small. So the, oil, the vessel made the oil look small. Are we together? The prophet said, go and enlarge your capacity. Borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. Enlarge your capacity. The moment there were vessels, the oil started multiplying. I learned this early in life. I've studied Jesus Christ and I've studied very successful people. Every successful person in life, 
every person that has been used mightily by God, first and foremost got to a point where they were convicted that the ability of the Spirit can work in and through them. Are we together now? Everyone, every single one of them. It took them time, but they stayed until they got to a point where their construction was unwavering. So you hear Job speaking things like, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He says, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. In other words, he knew his change would come. When David was in the cave of Adullam, he knew that inevitably he was meant for the palace. Listen, listen. The devil stands helpless in the face of a man who has made the word of God his mentality. At that point, Satan becomes powerless truly in your life because you are no longer governed by the circumstances and the things that your optical eye sees. Your convictions are higher than your physical perceptions. So you know that God is able. Now the question is, Satan has surrounded, or the issue is, Satan has surrounded our lives. Listen, he has surrounded our lives with things that compel us to think in a certain way. This is what cosmos is all about. Babylon, the, this godless system, Satan has created structures around our environment. They are called mind control systems. From the movies... Are we together now? To the way people behave, right? To spiritual forces that influence men. All of them are aimed at bringing people to think in a certain way. So by the time a lady watches a movie and she finds out that evil is celebrated, in that movie, a lady steals a man's money and they clap for her as being brave. So the devil gives your mind a new definition of what great means. That whenever you are able to oppress another successfully, you are great. And so you receive it. Are we together now? And then eventually, from morning till night, we walk out in the morning and return to our homes with all kinds of ideologies that are not consistent with the word of God. And what we keep seeing in our lives is a physical manifestation of things we did not bargain for but you thought about them long enough. That thought life became so powerful that it necessarily made us to start speaking it. Listen, there is a difference between speaking just because you want to talk and you are responding to the overflow of the content in your mind. The Bible says every time your mind is full, you must speak. It's not about whether you want or not. Uh -uh. It said, be ye filled with the spirit. Immediately say you will start speaking. So the moment your mind is full, your mouth will start speaking. Is God helping us? And so we begin to speak. And while we are speaking, we do not know that we are creating. Every time there is a union between your thought life and your words, there must be creation. So we call ourselves names that we have thought about for so long. And we have verbalized. And then our lives inevitably become it. Job said this. He said, the things that I feared most have come upon me. He feared many things. But the one he feared most became his reality. Are we together? There were many things he was afraid of. But the most dominant fear became his reality. So if you want to reign in life, you must realize that part of your assignment with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God is to come to a point where you think like Christ. I love Jesus. They brought five loaves and two fish. Say, ah, how are we going to feed these people? Jesus said, no, 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 no. Be silent. Don't corrupt my mindset. I know all things are possible. I'm El Shaddai. That you cannot see it does not mean it's, it's not there. And he told them, no. He lifted it and he gave thanks. And he told the people, he said, go and start sharing it. Sir, what about the embarrassment? Go and start sharing it. And the Bible says, as they were going. See that?
this is why you find out that certain things happen to people in certain ways your father kept calling you stupid from birth at 11 years you were behaving helplessly stupid now he thought he was venting anger he did not know he was creating are we together now they started calling the lady prostitute you don't stay in your home you go to somebody's home and at age 13 14 she looks back and sees that ah, she's beginning to have a lustful desire for men because every time your mind i'm not just talking of hallucination when your mind holds on to it like a conviction and your word speaks it's like a woman and a man meeting together there must be creation i never confess things i don't believe because i'm wasting my time are we together i pray that you will find you will see light in what i'm sharing with you when you see this you will know that there is nothing coincidence about a man's destiny every man receives the fruit of what he created or allowed others to create for him hallelujah and so every time your physical life is manifesting things that are not consistent with what the word of god says the key is not to complain the key is to take your eyes away the bible says looking on to jesus not looking on to your circumstances not looking on to your situations looking on to jesus he calls him the author and the finisher of our faith right from the time we were 10 20 in this ministry I already saw a crowd i preach that way i behave that way my convictions have never increased or decreased with people because what is in me is stronger than what i see what you are seeing today is what i spoke yesterday tomorrow will tell you what i'm speaking now are you getting what i'm saying now no 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 what you are seeing today is not my mindset of today <laughs> the physical realm always delays the realm of the spirit is faster i've gone ahead of this realm because there is the power of creation you can change any situation in your life it may take a while but as far as the heaven is above the earth you can change it the first thing is not just to shout and say god forbid god forbid is not a confession it's just an attempt to be human are we together now there are so many people who make all kinds of statements without the conviction to support it and so there are only statements no creation i will never fail me god forbid i won't fail yet you, you are seeing it right before you because you see what you are saying and what you are thinking are not the same so there is no creation are we together now there are many pastors who keep speaking and saying, in the name of Jesus, I have this and that and that, but the truth is their convictions are not true. After the church service, when they now sit down in a non-church platform, they start saying the things they really believe. It's like, oh boy, man, the truth is, Sky, it's not easy. Oh. To be a man is not a day's job, truly, truly. That's what they believe. You see that? That's their conviction. It's easy for us to use all kinds of spiritual words on stage thee and thou and you know god is faithful everybody say god is faithful but the truth is whatever is the pivot of your thinking is what will be your expression even when you are alone ah uh, when i'm alone i say the same thing i look at myself and i prophesy and i speak this is not just positive thinking this is kingdom living are, are we together now it's, it's not just positive thinking brothers and sisters creation did not stop on the seventh day god only rested creation is still on that's what makes us god co-creators but we have lost the art of understanding god's technology of creation it's not just speaking it's speaking on the strength of a conviction that's what produces creation hallelujah what is the sum total of your ideology
while you are seated here. Many of us believe all kinds of lies that the devil has put in us. And Paul is saying, finally. He says, I've, I've discussed other issues with you, but I cannot end this epistle this way. Finally, whatsoever things are true, don't think lies. What is a lie? Anything the word of God did not endorse. Anything at all. So your situation currently is a lie, as far as the word of God says. Hmm. See, see, the Bible puts it this way. I love the Bible. It inspires me. It says, listen, it says, for our light affliction, Imagine the hell you are going through and the Bible calls it light. For our light affliction. <laughs> then he says, which is but for a moment. It costs 10 years a moment. Now it's up to you to choose to believe what the word has said. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. It says, it walketh in us. A far more exceeding weight of glory. Then he says this, why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. How do you see what is unseen? He never said the things that are unreal. It only said they are unseen. That tells you all you see is not all there is. Brothers and sisters, there are microorganisms in this room. You cannot see them. But you keep something, keep kunu, leave it open for four days and see what it will turn into. It reveals to you that there are microorganisms, there are bacteria all around. To be carnally minded is to be governed entirely by your vision, your, your physical vision. And the devil knows that we are people who walk sensually. And so he has taken advantage of our senses to corrupt the reality of this principle. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. God cannot do much with you if your mind does not authorize him to create realities in your life. God wants to find expression in your world. He wants to do a lot of great and mighty things. But he's dependent on your mindset it's not just speaking you speak on the strength of conviction the world our parents our environment right the mindset in nigeria has made us to think in a certain way to an extent that when you fail right when things are not working in your life rather than staying with god and staying true until there is a manifestation you look for somebody who has failed more than you and you justify it you see an ideology it's supposed to be a solidarity a comfort but it has destroyed us so someone comes with a membership of 20 people and then god shows you that i can do more with you and you say am, am i not better than this guy at least I'm, I'm 20, he's 4. And by that we guarantee our mediocrity. And we remain there. Never to rise. Never to rise. Let me tell you how I think. I lock up myself in a room or wherever there is and i pray in tongues i soak myself with worship and i take a journey through the word of god because i don't trust anything else believe me any other thing outside the word of god is a lie now it's difficult to convince you because for us a lie is anything you cannot see, you cannot touch, or anything that is not true based on a reference. 
Jesus said, I am the way. I am reality. Not just an information that is correct. Truth is not what is correct. Truth is what has life in it. Anything that does not have the life of God in it is not truth. That's why it may be a physical reality that you have a lump, a breast lump or a growth on your legs. But the word of God tells you, listen, listen, listen. The word of God tells you that that is an affliction that can leave. It opens you up to the possibility that it can leave. It's up to you to now dwell on this physical reality and die with it. Listen, when remember in, in the Bible, remember in the Bible, that's why your eye, your eye is very important in your dominion. What you see physically and spiritually. Remember, brothers and sisters, the Bible teaches us that there was a time, listen, there was a time when the nation of Israel were dying and all of that and all of that serpents and so on and so forth. And he told Moses to make a serpent and put it up. Remember? And he said, if you can just look at it, you will be free. It matters what you see. It matters what you look at. You cannot sit down watching all kinds of devilish movies, watching all kinds of things, exposing yourself to environments that feed your mind wrongly. And then you want your life to conform to the word of God. It will not happen that way. So I surround myself. I soak myself with this atmosphere of worship. And then I begin to take a journey through the word of God. I read the book of Joshua and I see what God told me that no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. And like a camera, that's it. You see that? You see what this camera is doing? That's what your mind does to everything. Your mind snaps everything. It's up to you to delete every junk in your mind by the word of God. Your mind is like a camera. Listen, if you check this right now, you will see what was captured. How many of you, look at me, how many of you have posed well for a picture? You thought you posed well, but when you checked, what it captured, your eyes were closed. You would have argued that you didn't close your eyes. But at the point of capture, that's it. That's how our minds are. You think you are getting it right. But your, your reality is telling you something is wrong up there. If we are to look at these pictures right now, you may think you were standing very cute. But you find out that you were even like this sleeping. But you can never remember when you did that. The camera can remember. You see that? So you begin to see repeated woes in your life. And say, when did I do this? I go to church every day. I pray. And your mind says, well, as far as I'm concerned, every time you spoke, you spoke things that were not consistent with your mind. And the few times you spoke what was consistent with your mind, there was creation. This is the child. Oh, we are failures. It's not for us. This and that and that and that. It's not for people like us. And listen, the, the most, the most, the, the saddest part of this is people who are negative about life. Have you seen people like that? Let me advise you, run away from them quickly. Even if you grew up together, it's time to break away from them. There are people who stand close to you in five minutes. They are saying something negative. It's a devilish attitude. Believe me, if that thing is at work in your life, you need a retreat. Use the weekend. Retreat. Sam, come. Um, is it that, is it that in, in Koinonia, people are allowed to just sleep like that while a message is going on? You see what he's thinking. Are we together now? And then you move around and you are looking at... Uh, I'm seeing most Pastor Shegu and his wife do and co. What are they trying to tell us? <laughs> are we together? And then you saw that cake now. You see, they, their minds are negative. They always look for what is not working well. That's why their lives fail. So they try to attract people to themselves who are like them. He say, it, look, you may be a sincere person, but it must change. There are people like that. 
they never are optimistic about life good morning what is good about the morning that's why the bible says this is the day the lord has made it didn't say the lord and satan this is the day the lord made like you cook food for somebody this is the day that the lord made he said let us rejoice and be glad not complain and be angry listen this is the revelation i have so i come out in the morning and somebody insults me and i remember this is the day the lord has made my assignment for me to receive what he has made is until i rejoice and i am glad listen listen this looks little but i'm teaching you something the bible is saying in the realm of the spirit the day has been made because he says he daily loads us with benefit it has not manifested yet there is a condition your condition is rejoice and be glad rejoice and be glad because god made the day satan also made the day there is how you receive what he has made so every time you wake up there are two days in one you choose the day you want to see so i get up in the morning thinking I'm awake. Somebody will be saved because of my life today. Someone will be filled with the Holy Spirit because of my life today. Koinonia is rising higher. And somebody calls you and says, Do you know that I'm, I've not eaten anything? And I say, Don't worry. Our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. This is, I'm showing you how I'm thinking. Listen, I'm not just saying this because I'm, I'm acting here. It has become my construction. It's impossible to entertain any negative thought without a scripture rising as a standard if i lack explanation for the situation like job i will say god is greater god is greater lord i count you faithful the reason why your day is always a tragedy is because there is no rejoicing satan knows that and so from is is from your bedmate right immediately you wake up you just look and say why are you looking ugly like this say, please don't try me i'm i'm i'm, I'm angry this morning i had a, a a dream that is not supposed to be the moment you step down you find out that there's no light for you to bath you see there are orchestrations in your life but the bible says rejoice and be glad it didn't say rejoice because good things are happening rejoice as a rule rejoice as a key Are we together now? How many of you wake up and rejoice? In spite of the fact that immediately you rejoice, somebody just sent you a text and said, I've been tolerating you for a long time. I just want you to know that I had what you said about me. Wallahi, if I did this and that, and you read the text. Listen, listen. It's up to you to allow that thing in your mind and start speaking. And you find out that for one hour you are thinking and resentment is becoming your most dominant thought and you verbalize it oh god punish somebody for me see the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake because they execute the words of the saints are we together i never allowed see you can't be great thinking the way people are thinking. Somebody comes and tells you certain things and you say, God bless you. I rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He emphasizes it. He never say rejoice because you are happy. You went to the board and you saw what looked like, um, it didn't look like your destiny and you, you, you just laugh. Not just that you move around and then you stand and say, anybody that tries me will die in this place today. No creation is happening every day every time unfortunately most of what we are creating in our lives are tragedies and setbacks another aspect to this is anything you do not celebrate in another person you are not authorized to have it in your life oh this is a key in the spirit for as long as I keep talking about Sam, forget about stepping into the worship anointing. I will never. For as long as I trivialize Mike's grace, 
You see that? Many of us do not have this attitude of genuinely celebrating people. See, see, from this night I'm giving you an assignment. Remove the negativism out of your atmosphere and you'll be amazed to see what will begin to happen in your life. One of the happiest person I've seen in my life is a gentleman called Alex. Not many of you know him. Alex is a very interesting personality. He used to play bass guitar for me before he traveled abroad to study. The only time I saw Alex sick, he said he had malaria. I couldn't believe it because he was laughing. I said, Alex, malaria. No, you are, you are kidding. I've never seen him angry. Believe me, those who know him will tell you. He used to cook. He uses hot pot. He will cook and because I don't eat much, he will just fetch more. and say, Pastor Josh, this is your own. He will just push it and sit down with the pot and eat it. Always laughing. I mean, there was a time we lost one of our sisters years ago and he stood. Everybody was being remorseful. He was trying to be remorseful and I laughed. I said, this is not you. You are a joyful person. Those kind of people hardly fall sick, if at all. They are very happy. They don't see no masquerade chasing them in any dream. Because they are happy. They are happy. The praise of God is in their mouth. They are always optimistic. Are, are we together now? Always optimistic. Listen, work with people like that. They are always optimistic. Every time they see challenges, tell them, don't worry. There's a better day. These are the kinds of people to work with. Not those who say, let's sit down here. I told you. Next time when I talk, you will listen to me. No, no, don't work with those kinds of people. There are pastors I will never work with. They are negative. They are cynical. They are always complaining. Why is ministry not working? Ministry is working. Are we together? Never. I will never become a party to those kinds of things. No. God is faithful. The Bible says the path of the just and the just, it shines brighter and brighter. And as a pastor, you have to be careful. Don't carry your bad day and come and land it on your congregation. There are congregations that study the, the pastor. The moment they see the man like this, they know they are in for it. Because now he comes up and see those who are pastors laughing. You may not understand. Sometimes you can really be angry. And those who have annoyed you are there seated. And after singing the praise and worship, you are now looking. And then you say, stand up. And they, they pretend as if they didn't hear it. Did, did I not say, stand I will curse you now. In this church, you people don't give. You don't honor your leaders. People are suffering. Maybe the guy is broke. Things are not working. He has come on stage. The members are not cooperating. You are not sowing. No prophet's offering. No love offering. No seed of honor. The man is frustrated. His wife is telling him, look, let's leave this job. Go and leave this ministry. Go and look for a job. And he carries that anger. And then everybody's in trouble. The drummer is in trouble. The keyboardist is in trouble. Usually it's the worship team that gets to receive the, the lash. You, you know that, right? Let's appreciate the worship team. You don't know what they go through. Really? Then immediately you finish all kinds of... I choose to be positive. It's a choice. I choose to be true. I refuse to meditate on negative things. My life is a blessing. Listen, we're going to pray. I, I just showed us this principle. I will never think on things that are not true. I will never think on things that are not pure. I will never think on things that are not noble. I will, I, no man will preach me into this. No. There's no amount of message. I will not declare my loyalty to anybody who is negative. No. I love you, but carry your trouble and go away with it. I see life only in one direction. Only one direction. The way the word of God says it should be. And no matter what is in my obstacle now, what is in me is bigger than it. It's a matter of time. My physical reality will always, inevitably, oh, that you will believe this. And you will know that that one shoe you have is not all that there is. And you stop feeling negative. You will celebrate that moment because you are waving it goodbye forever. Are we together now? Pressure 
is a product of a poor perception. This is the reason why many people are under pressure. You are trying to buy a suit of 100,000 or 200,000 now because you are trying to show you are successful. Listen, 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 listen. If you can agree with God up here, Satan is no longer a factor. The only way Satan stops your harvest is to stop your seed time. Once it is sown, it becomes automatic. And the word of God is that seed. You ask the leaders, every time we're having leaders meeting, we don't have time for any sorrowing and mourning. When our sister transited to be with the Lord, we had our time of, uh, you know, just talking, but I challenged them at once. I said, no griefing. Remember my message that night. Why would you preach such a message when people have had certain things? Because her transition is not a tragedy. We know exactly where she is and whatever it is that the devil orchestrated, we are happy that she's rejoicing. Paul said, for, for me to live is Christ. He says to die. He uses a business language. Gain. Gain. I refuse to be negative. There is nothing any man will do to me. Listen, that will make me sit down. I'm just negative and say, Oh God, some of you say, Oh God, take my life. You will soon die. No, 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 no. It's not a negative prophecy. It's a warning. It's a caution. We do it. Oh God, no marriage, no job, nobody toasting me. Listen, listen. There is an atmosphere around you that is making that happen. You won't agree, but I'm telling you this. There is an atmosphere. I've seen ladies, please um, don't, 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 uh, don't think that I'm using this against any lady. I've seen certain ladies that may not even consider themselves to be as good looking. And you see the kind of brothers coming because they are optimistic. They know I will marry. They talk about their children with confidence. And you who stand say, children care. Where is the man? And then you find out that they sit down and true to it in your presence. Five people are calling and say, agree for me now. I'm ready to marry you. And you are there with your negative atmosphere. Human beings have prophetic atmospheres. They can repel or bring things to your life. Right? So a guy wants to say hello to you. They say, turn around and, 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 turn around and say hello to your, your, your neighbor and a, a guy walks to you and you carry your anger and bitterness that guy came for koinonia just like you how are you sweetheart sweetheart you don't stop there no. this person that is talking is maybe he's even getting married soon you now carry your anger you create this is why many people don't have friends two weeks and the friends are tired of them because there is an atmosphere that drives every good thing out of your life a negative atmosphere an atmosphere that is 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 from a wrong mindset he said let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable you will never hear me say anything negative about koinonia i'm the number one fan of this ministry i only see what god is doing and i celebrate it you will not see me sit down and be talking about another man of god and I'm telling you, Pastor Alpha, do you know that we saw blue flower in his church instead of yellow? No, never. Never. You must become very kingdom-minded and positive. I guarantee you, if you speak on the strength of that conviction, things will change in your life. I expect people to bless me every day. I'm surprised if they don't bless me. I expect it. It's not pride, it's the truth. Even this night. There are people, no, 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 no. I, this is my mind. You, you don't expect anything. You are even surprised when it comes. You say, for me, are you sure I'm the one not to give? Why can't you? Listen, 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 listen. What makes you think you do not deserve it? Say, I deserve the blessings of God. Shout it. I deserve the blessings of God. Say one more time. I deserve the blessings of God. I'm not teaching you carnality. I'm teaching you how to walk in victory. Many people always believe is, is the chaff that belongs to them. If you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more, brothers and sisters, with your heavenly father gave? How much more? 
every time you talk to people there are some of you you talk about people and say what's the latest what's the latest mean what is wrong in the person's life now after six months of not meeting the person are we together now what's the latest oh she has a shop so what's the latest it looks like nobody's even coming say i said it i said it I choose to believe the word. I choose to allow it become the construction of my mindset. Jesus said this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works. Brothers and sisters, I believe this. I don't know who is not working for, and I really feel bad for them, but as far as I'm concerned, this thing is going to work for me. There will always be people coming for koinonia. Lives will keep being changed. We will keep rising from glory to glory. When people say there is a casting down, for us here, there is a lifting up. It's by the hand of God. The anointing of the Spirit will never run dry in this house. At every point, there is increase. The word of God will never be scarce. It will never lose its place. Every time you come for koinonia, you will keep being blessed. That name will keep rising. This is my mindset. This is what I believe. This is how I live. In the open and in the secret, in my sleep, this is what I believe. I believe that favor follows me like a shadow. Everywhere I go, even people who do not want me, there is something upon me that compels them to bless me. I expect it. When it happens, I say, that's right. Consistent. I'm not going to betray my destiny with a negative confession. I will not. I will not. I will not. Jesus is glorified consistently in my life. Everywhere I go to minister, they receive the touch of God. I am a blessing. I'm not a liability to any man. I'm not a cost to any man. I choose to believe I am a blessing. Because he said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Are we together? This, are the, this is, is part of the secrets that has preserved and multiplied the anointing of the spirit upon my life don't you think it's just prayer and fasting alone there is an understanding that keeps the anointing comfortable in me nothing in me will choke the anointing out of me because i have learned to create the atmosphere i have an unction from the and i know that's why you will keep coming you will drag yourself from your room by an agency you cannot explain it's called anakazo it's at work is the compelling power of the spirit supported by a healthy mindset i will never be a failure in life me and poverty are signed up forever i waved it goodbye it waved me back there's no possibility of meeting again i lift my hands in worship as i sing praises to your name I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name. Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, As far as your eyes can see to you, I will give us an inheritance. He said, Abraham, from where thou art, it's okay that you are where you are, but from where you are, he said, lift up your eyes. From where you are, lift up your eyes and see. Northward, southward, eastward, westward. He said, as far as your eyes can see. Brothers and sisters, I see far. I see far. Are you seeing your today? Or you are already seeing what God has designed? Listen, if you see it, brothers and sisters, you can carry your 250 naira trouser and move happily. Because what people are seeing is a mirage. They will soon see what is true. The Bible says the things that are, on, that are seen are temporal. Temporal. I see a ministry with prosperity and abundance. I see a ministry touching people all over the globe. I see a ministry winning souls and saving lives. I see a ministry blessing people like, an, like a tree, like an edifice. 
That's what I see. That's what I see. I see a family of peace. I don't see myself being a wicked father. I don't see myself being an irresponsible father. I choose to be a good man. I, are we together now? It's a choice. This is what I see. I see Koinonia having the best workforce any ministry can have. That's why I celebrate them. That's why I honor them. You will never turn and see me embarrass the people I'm embarrassing myself. I love them and they know it. I'm not embarrassed about my love for them. Because they are gifted people. And I've created the atmosphere for them to be motivated by love and revelation. Not force. Is God speaking to us? You've got to culture your atmosphere. Sister, your, the next level of your life is at the mercy of your mindset. You've got to change it tonight. And say, look. The Bible says male and female, he created them. There is somebody who loves me. I may not see the person, but there's somebody who appreciates me. Forget about the one who came and looked at you and said, you think you are fine. Let him carry his trouble and go. But you know what you are looking at. I am a mother who will birth prophets and apostles and preachers. This is the mindset. Are we together now? You look at your academics and it looks like it's nose diving. And you say, I know my redeemer liveth. And people say, let's be real. Be real. You say, this is my reality. I reject that thing you are trying to tell me. My reality is what the word of God says. And I choose to believe it. 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 Ah, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Let the great of the Lord say so. I choose to say it because I believe it. It says the, the righteousness of faith speaks in this wise. On, on the strength of conviction you must speak so we are not just praying blindly oh i know my life is blessed and you just turn and say oh boy we really well let's just continue my life no 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 that's not conviction that's not conviction see in my little work i don't boast of being a general in the knowledge of god but i know something about him he is faithful this attribute of god I can tell you experientially God is faithful God is faithful I've seen his faithfulness that's why I take out time to celebrate him those who put their trust in him never go disappointed I guarantee you if you were disappointed you did not put your trust in him if you really put your trust in him you will watch your way maker step into what looks like there's no way and begin to create ways for you the night time will look like morning will never come but when he arises like a mighty man that he is you will see him move my own is to keep agreeing with him lord i agree with you i may not see where i'm going but i know that with you is a glorious destiny while you are saying it they, they laugh at you no problem they should keep laughing because when it happens they will say he said it I will never be ashamed of speaking the word of God many of us are embarrassed about it so you believe it but you keep quiet you say Lord I thank you because you are changing my story and and you now look and they, they laugh at you and they say Mr. Man look let me tell you if I'm God I will hear your prayer you that you are praying see when they tell you that kind of thing you feel bad ah I shout it to the mountain top we are going from glory to glory from grace to grace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that's what the Bible says and that's what I believe that's what I believe let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus the word led there is permit this is a very simple message tonight that is an attempt to challenge us to know that our thought life has a lot to do with our destinies when you come to my place, you don't see anything that reminds you of the devil and failure. Nothing. Nothing. Everything reminds me of heaven and greatness. I have a little board where I wrote three scriptures. One about the anointing, one about favor, the other one about, about increase or greatness. And I love it. Some of us are negative. We must change. Negativism will make you birth things you do not want please believe me pastors our minds must be stayed on what the word of god has said there may not be money in the account of the ministry 
there may not be this and that but I choose to believe I'm not just confessing blindly but you choose to believe my God is faithful my God is alive hallelujah we are going to pray and when it's time to pray I want us to believe it. as you pray you pray away these negative things that we have allowed the devil to put in our minds the Bible says casting down every yetzah there are imaginations that have exalted themselves above the knowledge of the Christ. You went home this morning and there was no maggi to cook food. You went home and there was nothing. There was just pepper. And you look at it and say, this is a mirage. My God is faithful. What about the welfare I'll be sending to foundations tomorrow? I see myself doing it. Papa Oyedeko, way before... He had the money to buy any designer shouted he said yeah i can never be poor he saw something he saw something to an extent that he was in america and he said god sent him down to come and make the people rich with no evidence on your own part brothers and sisters i believe him i judge him faithful he has been tested through different dispensations and he has been found faithful. My life is too small to judge the faithfulness of God. From glory to glory You are taking me From glory to glory to glory to glory From glory to glory you are taking me prophesied glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory, you are taking me. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, that financial scarcity is for a moment, brothers and sisters. That sickness is for a moment. That limitation is for a moment. He said, though weeping endures for a night, he says, joy, joy, joy comes with the morning. You are not the first to see carryover on the board. If you wore a matriculation gown, you will wear a convocation gown. Oh, come on now. There is nothing happening to you that is new. That's why I said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's where you will hear testimonies that are worse than yours and how God delivered people out of it. You are not the first to not have food to eat. I shared this thing humorously. I'll never forget one, one time in my life, I was so broke, things were so bad, I bought bread. Well, for, for some people, that's prosperity now. I bought bread and then with granite and just choked the thing inside and I was just eating and rejoicing. I'll never forget locking myself and dancing. I was dancing because I saw people blessing my life. I said, the anointing in my life is an endangered species. It's impossible for me to be ignored. It's only a matter of time. When I said that, there was no hope of anybody bringing any seed to Naira to say, take. He is taking you. Sister, you will rise like an edifice. I'm telling you. It's from glory. To glory, you are taking me. Personalize it as we prepare to pray. Glory to glory to glory from glory. To glory, you are taking me. From glory to glory to glory to glory from glory. Shout it after me, say in the name of Jesus. All I see around me is the goodness of God. 
is the mercy of God is the favor of God is the faithfulness of God all I see around me is increase glory beauty favor I reject every thought that is not consistent with the word of God I am a blessing lift your voice and begin to prophesy lift your voice and prophesy we cast down by the blood of the eternal covenant every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of the Christ we cast it down we cast down thoughts of failure we cast down thoughts of limitation we cast down thoughts of inferiority oh hallelujah we are well favored the blessed of the Lord moving from glory to glory we think only on things that are pure things that are true things that are noble things that have virtues and praise I refuse to see challenges I see the faithfulness of God I see the mercy of my God increase on every side honor on every side favor on every side Make sure you're praying inside and outside. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I tear down every negative thinking. Every negative mindset. Every thinking on failure. Every thinking on mediocrity. Everything that makes me look like a nobody. I tear it down in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, I challenge it. Challenge cultural mindset. Challenge the speakings of men. Over your life and destiny. For as a man thinketh, so he is. For as a man thinketh, so he is. Out of the abundance of your heart, of your mind, of your spirit, your mouth makes proclamations. Rekoto protos koto prakata lakata kata rakata pakata prakata ganabosh repoto so prekete I reject failure I reject failure I reject limitation I reject failure I reject limitation I reject failure I reject limitation Hallelujah Hallelujah the Bible says listen it said we having the spirit of faith as it is written I believe and therefore I speak it said we also like faithful Abraham we believe and we prove that we believe by speaking are we together everything you know the word of God has said for you you are going to speak it you are not just speaking you are creating are you ready now lift your voice and prophesy oh I'm the head and not the tail come on create realities above and not beneath many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivered him from them all no man is able to stand against me all the days of my life my path is as a shining light it shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day I am like a well watered garden the smell of my life is like the field that the Lord has blessed increase on every side 
favor on every side glad tidings on every side prophesy prophesy I declare in the name of Jesus I'm rising from one level of glory to another Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my rising where I've been deserted so that no man will go through me I become an eternal excellency a joy of many generations I'm like a well watered garden I am planted in the house of God and I flourish in the courts of my God in all age I am fat and flourishing I'm like a tree that is planted by the riverside that yields its fruit in season whose leaf does not wither everything I do prospers everything I do prospers there is an auction upon my life that make things to work everything I do prospers He reigns, he reigns, he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns, he reigns, our God is an awesome God. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns, he reigns, our God is an awesome. One more time. He reigns, he reigns. prayer point listen the bible says even god who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were called those things that be not as though they were called those blessings that be not as though they were called those favors that be not as though they were called those miracles Call it those connections. Call it those destiny helpers that be not as though they were. Call it those new levels that be not as though they were. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. Call them into your life. I call for destiny helpers. Pray. I call for prosperity. I call for increase. I call for favor. Call it forth. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you have an anointing upon you. Call it forth. Call for that miracle ministry. Call for that healing ministry. Call for those new levels of the prophetic, new levels of the apostolic, new levels of increase. Call for that direction. For the new level of life. Call for those ideas. Call for those strategies. For the next level. Call for those connections. hallelujah let's add one more prayer point listen the bible says 
if thou shalt say not if thou shalt wish on the strength of your conviction if thou shalt say to this mountain not any mountain a specific mountain if thou shalt instruct it be lifted from hands and cast into the sea and he says you do not doubt in your heart you will receive you will have i like us to speak there seems to be challenges in different areas of our lives i'm not ignoring their presence i'm only telling you they can change right now open your mouth mention the mountains and tell them the lord rebuke you the lord rebuke you the creator the owner of the heavens and the earth go ahead migraine headache the lord rebuke you poverty the lord rebuke you delay i say to you be lifted and cast into the sea setbacks the lord rebuke you come on pray speak to that mountain this favor the lord rebuke you stagnation the lord rebuke you barrenness the lord rebuke you cycles of failure the lord rebuke you hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus from today I choose and I decide to be positive from today I stop seeing failure I stop seeing limitations I stop living a life of mediocrity from today I declare that there is an anointing upon my life there is greatness upon my life the hand of God is upon me I'm not ordinary from today I declare that no mountain will be able to stand before me the wisdom of the spirit is at work in me creative ideas are flowing through me in the name of Jesus when men say there is a casting down i declare that there is a lifting up my story will be from glory to glory i reject negative reports i do not receive them in the name of jesus when this becomes the construction of your mindset I guarantee you your life will be a wonder to you and to all those around you they will see an ordinary man but you will see the results of God hallelujah before we pray for those who are visiting with us I'd like us to lift our hands and let me just speak over our lives father you put this word in my heart for your people and I'm praying that every single one of us from tonight give us the grace to reject negativism as a family of faith Satan will curse you and all you have to offer in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that every thinking of limitation leaves our life tonight every thinking of failure and setback leaves our life tonight every thinking of unbelief everyone here that is thinking i cannot make it i declare to you that there is a hand that is holding you and in partnership with that hand you are nothing short of a wonder in the name of jesus christ i minister to people who have been victims of their past or the scourging tongues of men 
people have made pronunciations over your life and have declared to you that you are good for nothing in the name that is above all names we change it by the word of god we change that report by the word of god i speak to you that you will keep recording one level of victory after another that every challenge that stands before you will become your testimony tomorrow i say it again every challenge that stands before you becomes your testimony and all those who laugh at you today will laugh with you tomorrow in the name of jesus christ i declare may our ebenezer rise for you the one who can help men the helper of men he said thus far god had been our ebenezer let him rise for you in the name of jesus everything that has made you to speak negative over your life everything that has blocked your eyes from seeing the faithfulness of god we tear that veil tonight in the name of jesus and i declare that from tonight your convictions will be positive at all times you will rejoice and you will be glad that praise and thanksgiving will never depart from your mouth that you will never have any reason to see life in a negative dimension in the name of jesus christ hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain